So in this final video of Endocrine System 2, we're going to wrap up our discussion on the adrenal glands by entitling the next flowchart, Adrenal Glands 2. And here what I want you to focus on is figure 45.20b. And in this final video, we're going to be looking at the adrenal cortex. Previously, we looked at the adrenal medulla and its role in the fight-or-flight reaction. The adrenal cortex will also have a role in times of stress, but this time the response will not be to an extreme moment of stress, but rather the adrenal cortex functions or let's say responds to and has a response to uh, chronic stress in this situation actually. So chronic stress is different than extreme stress because this is the type of stress that happens all the time. It's less, let's say, extreme in the sense that it's not one murderer chasing you, but it's just this idea that there's a chronic stress associated with the body, something that's going to cause the following sort of stepwise reactions. What we're going to have is going to be a response in addition, a, a little bit of a difference actually that I should mention before we go any further, is that this at renal cortex responds to endocrine signals instead. And that's because it does not actually respond to the nervous signals that the adrenal medulla responded to. So already we're not talking about a super fast sort of mechanism. We're talking about more of a slower mechanism of response because we're talking about an endocrine signal that has to travel through the blood and thus it's going to be a little bit slower in its overall response because the response is not absolutely necessary immediately because it's a chronic stress. Let's take a look at how this works in the adrenal cortex by talking about what the overall hormone cascade pathway is. So what's going to happen is the hypothalamus detects any stress any form of stress, small, big, whatever it may be, because stress is going to be uh, sur surrounding the body almost all the time from the external or maybe even the internal environment. So any stress whatsoever, not an extreme form of stress right now. We're talking about any stress. So what's going to be happening here is we're going to then have a release of a uh, hormone, and that's going to be releasing cortical release factor, CRF. The hypothalamus does this. It releases this. This immediately goes to the hypothalamus's buddy, the uh, anterior pituitary. So this stimulates the anterior pituitary, CRF that is. Once the anterior pituitary gets this message, anterior pituitary will then say, okay, I have, some, I have to respond to this. I have to release something, and it will release ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone. So here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go to the adrenocortico, the adrenal cortex. That's our goal to get there. So now this is going to cause us to travel through the blood. And once it travels through the blood and reaches the target tissue of the adrenal cortex, ACTH then stimulates adrenal cortex, I'll just call that AC, to produce corticosteroids. That's basically our end response here, is to produce corticosteroids. Corticosteroids, not end response, but our response of the adrenal cortex, I should say. Produce corticosteroids, and corticosteroids, remember, steroids are all derived from cholesterol, and there are going to be two types of corticosteroids that can be produced in this situation of ACTH, telling the adrenal cortex to make corticosteroids. The two types are as follows. The first type to look at are the gluco corticosteroids, or, or the glucocorticoids, is a better way to say it, that's how you actually say it, glucocorticoids. Here, what we're going to do is, the job of these guys is to make glucose, which is the energetic desirable molecule that many cells want from, and a weird source actually, from non-carb sources, aka uh, take the protein, let's say, that's being stored within muscle um, and turn that protein, for example, I should say, take that protein and turn it into some sort of glucose molecule. And that's a very complex process. And that complex process is governed by the release of glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. So essentially, the glucocorticoids will act, let's say if it's protein, let's say it acts on skeletal muscle. At, at skeletal muscle, we usually have a good amount of protein to work with. 
So when we're at the skeletal muscle, it's going to cause the gluco glucocorticoids are going to say, uh, let's break down some of this muscle for its amino acids. That's what we want to get. We want to get the, the smaller component of this protein that's found within the skeletal muscle. So there's going to be a breakdown of muscle proteins. And when you break down muscle proteins, you get the monomer of those proteins. That monomer would be amino acids. Those amino acids, after this breakdown, would be transported to the liver or the kidney, uh, transported to the liver and kidney, I should say, transported to the liver and also the kidney. Remember the goal. The goal is to make glucose from a non-carb source. We've got a non-carb source called an amino acid, and now we're taking it to the liver and kidney to possibly make it into glucose. And that's exactly what those two structures do. They synthesize this amino acid to glucose. We don't need to get into the details of that process and mechanism. Then that glucose that's just newly been made by the liver and kidney from the amino acid non-carb source is sent to the blood. And after it's sent to the blood, we then are going to have this capability of combating stress. You might be asking, how does glucose combat stress? Well, it combats stress because now you've made glucose and you now have uh, energy basically in the body and throughout the cells to combat any sort of stress. You have energy basically to do some sort of function that's necessary to calm down whatever the stress may be. Okay? So that's our glucocorticoids function and then the other type of corticosteroid that's made uh, after this ACTH message sent to the adrenal cortex is or are a class called the mineralocorticoids. So mineralocorticoids, very fancy terms here. Mineral corticoids, these are going to be hormones that regulate mineral metabolism. So let's write that down. Hormones regulate mineral, that's the name, that's the key here, mineral metabolism. And also their number one job essentially through this mineral metabolism regulation is the following. They're going to maintain and uh, th therefore regulate both the salt and also the water balance within the blood. They're making sure that this salt and water balance is even and straight and regulated nice and smooth at whatever set point or normal range it's supposed to be at. Um, and that's usually what's going to happen is because of stress, that water and salt uh, balance is going to be thrown off and mineral corticoids will be released upon their stimulation, uh, upon their release from the adrenal cortex to say, hey, stress is causing this salt and water balance to mess up. You know what? We need to fix that. And the mineral corticoids will go and try to fix that. A good example of this to remember would be aldosterone. Aldosterone. I spelled it wrong, of course. Aldosterone. That's our example here. It, uh, its main function is to regulate salt and water balance within the blood. And that's it. That covers endocrine system too. Again, of course, I hope hopefully you can see that there are a lot of hormones. Believe it or not, we haven't even covered uh, the majority of the hormones within the body. We've covered the major ones at least. There are a lot of hormones. There are a lot of messages. There are a lot of jobs that are need to be done by these hormones and by the respective anatomical structures that release and produce and make these hormones. It's worthy of appreciation. It's worthy of understanding and it's worthy of learning. And hopefully through this series of uh, flowcharts and videos that we've done in Endocrine System 1 and 2, you see that this is a system that's often overlooked because all of it is involuntary. All of it is not sort of thought of. But believe it or not, there's a lot of process that goes on without thought through these hormone cascade pathways that we've seen in great detail. Hopefully you've gained a greater appreciation for the endocrine system as a whole.